poking fun at using your platform. And I, I want to take the, the opportunity in the moment to apologize and say that I'm sorry. And it was wrong. And I shouldn't have done it. I see now how it could have hurt some people. And it did hurt people. You could even ask my parents. Ever since I was little, it's always been a little tough for me to admit when I'm wrong. And this is me admitting that I was wrong. Um, I wish I could take it back, but I can't, and I'm truly sorry. Um, I hope you can forgive me for it. Uh, I know that some people will feel like this is not enough of an apology, and I understand that is okay. Um, and I, I guess because of some of the, the realness of the reaction to it, there's a philosophy that if you if you don't publicly talk about the threats and the the doxing that it will it will maybe just go away and if you talk about it it might actually ramp up and happen more not just threats to me but my family and my wife and my daughter and stuff and so what I want to do is I want to clear something up in hopes that that happens less or or at least you know stops happening altogether. Uh, I know that I'm, I'm not a racist person. I know that about myself. Not just because of the words that I say or what I, what I say outwardly, but also because of my actions. Um, when I, just out of high school, I got a job working at a, a sports camp um, it was an all summer long thing. I was about 20 years old and I was a camp counselor for, and everyone that was a part of the camp were younger, uh, inner city kids. And it was something that I fell in love with. Um, yes, I got paid to do it. I mean, minimum wage, but at the end of that summer, I realized I love this outreach. I love the ability to, to go into the inner city where kids may not have all the resources that some other kids have and providing that. And then a few years later, when our band first started making money, I think it was 2016, about five years ago, one of the first things I did was I made a nonprofit. I founded it and funded it. Um, that, that nonprofit is happening today. Uh, it's still going. And it's something that means a lot to me. We, we go into the inner city and we hand select some kids out of schools to be a part of a camp. We do two camps a year. Um, I want to thank Ohio State uh, campus university for for you know letting us use their facilities. It wouldn't be possible without that. And um, we introduced these kids to uh, college coaches, college players, um, also life coaches, and guidance counselors, and uh, to hopefully give them the tools to not only excel and propel their career in, in sports. But even um, more than that, this is something I've been doing for five years now, uh, to, since 2016. And um, I've never gone public about it. I've never asked for you guys to fund it. I've never asked um, to help um, with, the, with the ability of making it work financially. I've just kind of taken that all on myself. And I've never really promoted it. Because that wasn't the point. The point was the outreach. The point was the impact. And um, that's truly all I was interested in. I, wanna, I want you to know that I'm an advocate for, an ally of, and a supporter of black lives in ways that you may never know. Now listen, I'm not saying, I'm not talking about this as an excuse for what I've done and what I've said and what I've tweeted. I still come back around and know I was wrong and I should have done it and I'm sorry. I am. Listen, I, 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 hear, I hear some people say, I've grown up listening to you. I've grown up with you guys. I've been in this band for over 10 years and uh, the truth is I've grown up with you. And how can you not be a different person after 10 years? How can you not change and learn and become better? So I hope that you allow me to utilize what happened um, 
as another way for me to learn to grow and become better. Anyway, man. I'm actually going to take just a quick break, really, really quick break. 